Hi, this is Dr. Sivashankar and I am here to share my clinical experience with biomimetic dentistry. My sincere thanks to Dental AD and it's through Dental AD lectures I was introduced to the concept of biomimetic dentistry. We all need someone to inspire and to motivate us to do better than what we do now. My mentor believes that there is nothing new under the sun. Although he is considered to be the father of biomimetic dentistry, Dr. Pascal Magny never claims that he invented or published something first. He believes that God gave us a natural tooth as a model and we, the dentists and the dental technicians, just copy them. The copyright belongs to none of us but to him. Thank you Dr. Magny for sharing your wonderful knowledge about biomimetic dentistry. I was struggling a lot with direct composites and thanks to Dr. Jason Smithson for his inspiring lectures and articles after which I gained a lot of confidence and started delivering trouble-free posterior restorations. The term biomimetic is from two words. Bio is from the word biology and mimetic is nothing but mimic or copy. So biomimetic is to mimic or copy nature. Biomimetic dentistry focuses on the preservation of tooth structure, protecting the adjacent tooth and most importantly limits the number of root canals performed in our routine practice. Nature has designed our teeth to work for our lifetime with beautiful cusp, fissures, grooves and marginal ridges. And if something goes wrong, either because of a decay, fracture or attrition, with traditional dentistry, we just remove almost 50 to 75% of the existing healthy tooth structure just for a crown. But with biomimetic protocols, we just conserve the healthy tooth structure and provide a long-lasting and reliable solution with the help of direct or indirect restorations. So to summarize, the main goals of biomimetic dentistry are to avoid enamel amputation. We try to conserve maximum tooth structure as possible. Avoid root canal. In my practice, I have eliminated the need for almost 30 to 40 percent of root canals in my day-to-day -day practice. Avoid crowns whenever possible. So, if the tooth is vital, even in a deep carious situation, we try to preserve the vitality of the tooth by avoiding root canals. The infected dentin is completely removed. The affected dentin is retained. We seal the dentin. We allow the affected dentin to remineralize. And finally, the cavity is restored with a direct or indirect restoration. In case of non-vital tooth, we try to preserve as much tooth structure as possible by avoiding crowns and this was my first case in 2017 the perfect way to start my new year and you can see the train of the overlay and a beautiful final restoration with maximum preservation of tooth structure so why did i choose biomimetic dentistry the early part of my private practice i had very limited treatment options as far as restorative dentistry is concerned. If it's a small class too, I prefer amalgam with or without band. And later I shifted to composites with sectional matrix and rings. And when it's a wide class 2 situation, I prefer full crowns with or without root canals. But when I started learning about minimally invasive dentistry and biomimetic protocols, I realized that my practice and my protocols were totally outdated. I would like to share a case which totally changed my attitude towards restorative dentistry. So this patient came with a complaint of pain in relation to 27 and 28. This image was taken after removing the ceramic crowns in 2728 and you could see a lot of secondary caries underneath the ceramic crowns. And uh, in 26 can notice some kind of discoloration going on. So everything 
started with a simple class 2 defect so patient had food, uh, she had food impaction between 26 and 27 and 27 was treated with a ceramic crown later after 6 months she had food impaction between 27 and 28 again 28 was treated with a ceramic crown and uh, during the initial uh, first appointment and during the crown preparation for 27 the dentist he accidentally damaged the distal portion of 26 as a result of which over a period over a period of time it also became non vital so this is where i started realizing the dark side of traditional dentistry and then i started incorporating minimally invasive protocols in my practice for this patient i had no other chance so i treated, treated this patient with three root canals and three full crowns and after few years i had a chance to meet this patient again i was very happy so this was in 2016 with three full crowns uh, still in proper function and i was very happy for two reasons first i am not practicing this kind of traditional dentistry anymore and second i could appreciate a drastic improvement in my photographic skills you can see the poor presentation poor image in 2011 and i can see the almost a decent image and uh, it's beautifully cropped for a presentation so this is in 2016 i'd like to present few cases which are my favorite cases with biomimetic protocols i like this case for so many reasons very cooperative patient right from the first day first appointment regular follow ups and final outcome more than what i expected and so on i met this patient almost 4 years back he just came for a routine checkup with his parents and i noticed a failing restoration which was done one year back his parents never expected a failure within one year after the first filling and they demanded a long lasting solution so just have a look at the extent of the final rest of the failing restoration and for those who like to know where i live the defect almost uh, resembles my country india and i live somewhere here so with the same old uh, traditional protocols maybe this tooth will go for another 2 uh, to 2 to 3 refillings in the next few years then maybe crown root canal and crown extraction and maybe followed by fpd or implants so this is going to be a never ending story with traditional dentistry but with proper biomimetic protocols this tooth cycle of death can be stopped and this tooth has a bright future in the safe hands of a biomimetic dentist so an indirect restoration was planned and the old restoration was removed completely during the first appointment and once the cavity was completely prepared it was followed by immediate dentin sealing immediate dentin sealing is nothing but sealing dentin immediately when the dentin is freshly cut so this is the only time the dentin is going to be clean and fresh and where we can achieve the maximum bond strength so the tooth was etched and washed completely and then the bonding agent is applied to seal the dentin i prefer fourth generation bonding agent which is a total etch technique for this immediate dentin sealing technique just because of a simple reason most of the studies lectures and the articles have come across by only with fourth generation bonding agents so the bonding agent was applied and light cured so after complete polymerization of the bonding agent a thin layer of flowable composite was applied along the floor of the cavity and also on the walls of the cavity to block all the undercuts and create a smooth preparation so after curing the flowable composite glycerin gel is applied to prevent the oxygen inhibitor layer and then the flowable composite flowable composite is cured through the glycerin gel for 10 to 15 seconds so then the water soluble glycerin gel is completely washed and now the enamel margins are refinished since this is immediate dentin sealing we do not we do not want any bonding agent 
or any composite on the enamel surface. So the first appointment was completed with impression taking. So an indirect restoration with Emax was cemented in the second appointment. I don't have a complete cementation protocol but only the final image and you can see the beautifully blended restoration with the existing tooth structure. So this was in January 2013 and the most interesting part of this case is the 4 years follow up. I know 4 years follow up is not something great but still this is worth presenting. So this is the follow up image in January 2017. After 4 years still a beautiful restoration and nothing has changed. And the most important thing this tooth has crossed more than 1 year of orthodontic treatment with a cemented molar band and you can see it's not even properly cleaned and the image was taken immediately after removing the molar band and you can see the completely erupted second molar also this is another image of the same patient opposite side 46 indirect restoration done with emax at the same appointment and even this is also not completely clean with some excess cement and uh, you can see the second molar, it's not even fully erupted, uh, it's delayed eruption. So I'm sure that these restorations are going to last for so many years to come and even decades. So January 2013, January 2017 with full biomimetic protocols. So presenting another case, almost a similar situation, same protocols and similar treatment plan. The main concern of this patient was decay and food impaction and we planned for an indirect restoration. The tooth was isolated and I could see a lot of undermine caries and almost everything was completely removed. Then the tooth was etched, washed, followed by immediate dentin sealing with 4th generation bonding agent and then a thin layer of flowable composite along the floor and walls of the cavity to block all the undercuts. And finally, everything is cured through the glycerin gel. Now after removing the rubber dam, I just removed the weak, unsupported tooth structures. And uh, whenever I prepare an interdental region, I make sure that the adjacent tooth is completely protected using wedge guard. So now the preparation is almost complete and ready for impression taking. Direct restoration was not my choice for this case for few reasons. If I go with the sectional matrix, I don't have sufficient tooth structure to hold my matrix and ring. And I need a lot of skill and time to complete the restoration with a circumferential matrix. But I have a lot of reasons to choose an indirect restoration. The ratio of the prepared surface is more than the unprepared surface with a lot of dentin exposed. So immediate dentin sealing is done which ensures less stress on the dentin and 100% reliable enamel bonding during cementation. So this is time saving for me. Even if it's done in two appointments, in my practice, when compared to the build up, finishing and polishing of a direct composite, really it's time saving for me. So the cementation appointment for my indirect restoration, the tooth was sandblasted, isolated, etched and washed and finally the bonding agent was applied and the restoration was cemented using the resin cement. Now you can see the beautiful final restoration after complete finishing and polishing. So this is before and this is after. So now I have assured the patient that this restoration is going to last for decades because of so many reasons. Stress-free dentin bond development, better bond strength, less bacterial leakage, less sensitivity and everything is just because of only one reason which is immediate dentin sealing. And less chance of secondary caries because I have cemented this restoration with the resin cement which is fluoride releasing. So in my practice, avoid root canal doesn't mean treating tough situations, treating deep subgingival caries, using laser to remove the infected interdental tissues and proper isolation, 
then differentiating infected and affected dentin followed by deep margin elevation and restoring the teeth with indirect restoration or avoid crowns doesn't mean exposing deeply buried molars inside the tissues using laser and then elevating margins and bonding restorations or a flat preparation So these are the situations I often encounter in my day-to-day -day practice, the victims of traditional dentistry. So this patient came with a complaint of pain in toe six, toe seven, full crown removed in toe six, full crown removed in toe seven. So everything started with a small class two defect and foot impaction between toe five and toe six. Toe six treated with the full crown, then foot impaction. Full crown for toe seven, then pain in toe six, so root canal through full crown, then pain in toe seven, again root canal for toe seven. So it's almost a never-ending story with traditional dentistry. So these teeth are perfect candidates for crowns and root canals, the hands of. traditional dentistry with traditional protocols so for me in my practice i think i have saved a definite crown or maybe a root canal with crown with biometric protocols so it's up to us to decide whether we need a happy patient who just comes for a review every year without any problem in the treated tooth or an unhappy patient who always meets you with a problem and makes your life more stressful so for an experienced dentist after so many years of practice with traditional protocols it will be very difficult to unlearn things and incorporate biometric protocols in their day to day practice but for dentists in the early stage of their practice it's a great opportunity to incorporate minimally invasive biometric protocols so think different stay ahead Goodbye, Mimetic. Thank you.